22 things for your supply chain in 2022. Okay, I know we're halfway through 2022, but that's what we've got coming up. So somebody asked me the other day, what sort of things should we be focusing on in our supply chain this year? What sort of things are other people focusing on? And so I thought I would try to squeeze in 22 things for you to do in 2022 in your supply chain if you're not already. So I don't intend covering these in a lot of detail because there are videos for all of these on the channel. And if you're not subscribed, do hit subscribe and hit the bell and that way you're notified every time a new video comes up. But I just want to sow a seed, put a few ideas in your head, of some of the things that you really need to be checking in your supply chain this year. So you might wanna just make a note of the ones that really resonate with you uh, and then hunt out the video that goes through those in more detail. So right from the top, 22 things. We're gonna start with strategy. Number one is get one. Uh, I'm still amazed at the number of businesses that don't have a supply chain strategy. Very easy to put together. There's a video on the channel, take a look. Number two is have three or four clear objectives for that supply chain strategy. I've seen companies put together strategies with 13 objectives. That's too many. People are not going to be focused on that. There's not going to be good direction and clarity. Three or four is ample. Number three, still on strategy, is to have some very clear enablers. So whatever those three or four objectives are, then work down through your strategy and work out what are the things that are going to enable us to achieve those objectives. Uh, and then number four, still on strategy, is make sure you put in some KPIs that are directly linked to your strategic objectives. Way too many businesses, organizations, have a whole raft of KPIs and they're measuring things that you know, I wouldn't say are not important, but maybe are not as important or as high a priority as other things. So for example, if one of your supply chain objectives is to have the best possible service in your sector, well, guess what? You've got to have some enablers that will get you there. You've got to have some KPIs that will get you there that are directly showing you how you're performing against that objective. So first four on strategy. Next, we're going to hit the network, supply chain network, distribution network. Number one, it had to be on the list for this one. It's actually item number five, cost to serve. You must understand cost to serve through your distribution network. If you don't, you are losing money. You are paying too much for your distribution network. Every company I've worked with over the years who hasn't understood cost to serve correctly and then goes through that analysis on their distribution network particularly is astounded and it highlights very easy things to fix that you can reduce cost, improve service, and so on. Number six, balance your inventory across the network. So for your, for your industry, for your business, for your customer base, it might mean that you have a full range in every distribution center. It might be that you have fast movers in local distribution centers and slow movers in national or regional distribution centers. But you need to balance up that inventory because what can happen if you don't have a strategy around that is that you're gonna be amassing inventory. It kind of puddles, that's the term I was looking for. It puddles in your network and you get too much inventory buildup. Uh, and so balancing that inventory is really important. Another thing I'd mention, and it's number seven, is reduce handling across your network. So by that, I mean not just through your supply chain, but a lot of product goes backwards and forwards through supply chains. So, you know, it'll get moved from this DC to that one and then back to this one and so on. So really take care and reduce the amount of handling in your network. Next, we have customer service. So I'm going to run out of fingers here in a minute. Number eight, make sure you have a clearly documented customer service policy. Um, again, I'd, I'd have to say at least half the organizations I work with don't. Uh, they probably got a policy somewhere, but it's not that well known within the organization. It's certainly not as well known out in their customer base. So you must state very clearly what the customer service offer is and manage that. Number nine is differentiate that customer service offer. There's very few organizations that I've worked with who could legitimately apply a sort of one-stop shop, a, a one service level right across all of their customer base. By that, I mean it's not necessary. 
I can't think of an organization I've worked with, do comment down below if you can think of one, uh, where it's appropriate for every single customer of you know, customer type, customer location to get exactly the same service offer. If a service offer is not differentiated, you're probably over-servicing some and probably under-servicing others. Number 10, now I have run out of fingers, uh, is measure that customer service. How are you performing? Uh, get feedback from customers, but measure internally as well how that service policy is working. Now we move on to inventory. We'd have to mention that. So number 13 is do your ABC analysis regularly. ABC analysis simplistically is what are the fast movers, medium movers, slow movers, and make sure that you're getting the right inventory levels and the right deployment through your network. So really, really important. Number 12, did I say 13? I should have put my glasses on to read these. Number 12, improve your forecasting, your forecasting accuracy, your forecasting procedures. Uh, because if that's not right, you're never going to get your inventory levels right and you're not going to get your inventory deployment right. Number 13, implement SNOP, sales and operations planning. Again, many organizations haven't really embraced this. I mean, it's been around for decades uh, and they're still trying to do uh, all of this inventory planning and sales and operations planning on spreadsheets and you know whiteboards and so on. Um, you really need to adopt the process. Sales and operations planning is not about IT necessarily. It's about having a robust process, uh, communication across functions within the organization to make sure that inventory availability is as high as possible, balanced with costs. So do check out some of our SNOP videos. Number 14, final inventory one, is review your slobex. And thank you, Melanie, for introducing me to the term slobex. Slow moving, obsolete, and excess stock. So do regularly review your inventory uh, and your warehouses can get clogged up with a lot of slow moving and excess stock. Again, it comes back to improving inventory management. Then we move on to warehousing. And number 15 is have a look at your layouts because our, our logistics and supply chain needs do change over time. Um, product profiles change, customer needs change, uh, and sometimes you can improve on a layout that perhaps you've been using for a number of years. It could be using better storage media, it could be using better MHE. Um, we worked with a client recently where they were running out of space in a warehouse, for example, uh, and we just did a quick bit of analysis and worked out that their aisles were way too wide and with a slightly different uh, type of forklift, they could narrow the aisles. So if you imagine 10 aisles and you start shuffling them all closer together, they increase their capacity by about 30%. Uh, and all of that uh, movement of product and moving of the racking took place over a number of weekends and business was not even disrupted. So well done to that company. Number 18, carry out slotting in your warehouse. If you have never slotted your warehouse, let me explain very briefly what it is. Uh, it's a simple process of analyzing all of your products to make sure that you understand their velocity and, uh, and, and the, the volume that is used and so on. So. You're looking at your A's, your B's, your C's, your D's. A really simple example of what slotting is about. Think of your refrigerator uh, and think of when you open the door, what's in the door of the fridge? If I open mine, um, might not, maybe I shouldn't admit what's in the door. Um, but no, you'll find things like eggs and milk and, and the stuff that you use more frequently. Tuck down the back of the shelf in the refrigerator is the stuff that you don't use so often. Why is, why is that efficient? Because you can get to things easily. It's the same in your warehouse. You don't put the frequently picked items way down the back of the warehouse or high up in the racking. And so slotting is a, an analytical process that you can go through to really uh, identify exactly where in the warehouse all the individual products should be based on their pick profile. And for companies that have never done it, they can save about 30% on their labor costs. So Sorry to labor that one, but it's a very important one. Carry out slotting. Number 17, reduce the number of touches and handling in your warehouse. I've said this a few times on the channel. It's applicable all the way through the supply chain, the distribution network, your warehouse. Every time you're touching a product, you're incurring cost. You're incurring labor cost, equipment cost, whatever that might be. Have a look at your warehouse. And if you're only touching the product five times going through the warehouse, you're doing pretty well. I've seen companies where they touch the product 10 times. So what do I mean by a touch? Unloading it, checking it, putting it away in the racking, 
picking it, packing it, there's five. Um, you know, you, you can probably think of others. How many times do you touch your products? Maybe comment down below. So that is warehousing. Next, we move on to transport. Number 18, use the right carriers, whether that be road freight, sea freight, air freight, uh, for your type of product, for your product mix, for your uh, delivery profile, make sure that you're using the right sort of uh, transport providers to match with your business needs. I see a lot of the times that, that you know, people are not doing that. Um, what can that mean? It can mean that your service isn't going to be so great. It can mean that your costs are not going to be that great. Uh, number 19, use the right rate structure. There's loads of videos on the channel about this. Uh, what do I mean by the rate structure? I, I don't mean whether you're paying $10 a pallet, $12 a pallet, $20 a pallet or whatever it is, but is a cost per pallet the right structure? So in terms of transport, you know, you could be paying a full truck load, you could be paying a pallet load, you could be paying a cubic meter load, you could be paying a drop load, you know, per delivery. All of those are quite appropriate for different circumstances, different types of businesses. So make sure you're paying in the right way. And that brings me then on to number 20, which is to apply the right KPIs and incentives to your transport providers so that um, if their performance improves, if the service improves, if the asset utilization improves, there's a little bit of a win-win and you're incentivizing really good performance in terms of cost and service. We've got two left. What are we going to talk about? Performance. So number 21 is benchmark your supply chain and logistics performance. If you've never done it, I would urge you to do that. Why? Because unless you know how good others are in your industry, and particularly what sort of performance the best in your industry are achieving, how do you know how good you are? How do you know how far what's the gap between your performance and the best in class or your performance and the average. So it's something that I would urge everybody to do on a fairly regular basis, maybe a regular basis every couple of years or so. Uh, you need to know how good you are. And then the final one, number 22, is to then set your improvement goals. Having benchmarked your performance, you know, we're here, this is where best in class is. Well, we wanna get here in the next 12 months. So set some realistic targets based on your current performance and the opportunity that you've identified through benchmarking. So there we go, a very quick run through. 22 things that you might wanna think about in your supply chain and logistics operations this year. Um, every single one of those topics is covered in detailed videos on the channel. So if you want more detail, it's there. Thank you for watching. Maybe one last question. What else would you focus on this year? I'm trying to get pallets, I'm trying to get C sea freight capacity? Tell me down below what's your biggest focus this year. Bye for now and thanks for watching.